Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is August 21st and right now we are looking at the upper level water vapor loop. You can see the state of California is here. we got the Hawaiian Islands. We've got tropical storm activity developing down here, including Hurricane Gilma. And we've got our polar lobe here dropping down across western BC. It's going to set up shop right off the coast of Oregon. Dive down into California here and then pinwheel through the area as we go through the weekend. And then finally clear the area as we go on in towards next week. We're going to take a look at those details here as we go through through the video this morning. Take a look at day one thunder from Outlook. You can see that it does include Las Vegas and some of extreme southeastern California there. There's a marginal risk for some uh, severe wind gusts there just south of Phoenix. It does include Tucson, Arizona. This is for tomorrow. You'll see it starts to clip northern California as the trough is going to be dropping down the coastline here. And then day three it starts to include places like Redding, California and just north of the Bay Area. It starts to bring some precipitation and a much cooler air mass at least for a couple, two, three days. Now, taking a look at thunderstorm chances today, and again, it kind of off, you know, it does include needles here in Lake Havasu City, but we're not looking at a lot here for Barstow or 29 Palms, for example, or Palm Springs. Now, taking a look at the uh, actual chance of 24 hour snowfall greater than a half an inch, you can see Tioga Pass here as we go through. Uh, Saturday morning, you know, it's not going to be much. It's the highest peaks, but the biggest concern is that it's going to be kind of raw out there across the back countries. So, you know, those temperatures are going to drop back down. So, you know, if you know anybody heading off to the backcountry here, I'll let them know here because sometimes people can get caught off guard. You guys know how it goes. And uh, this is a little bit of a taste of fall here. This is Reno National Weather Service, which does include portions of California as well. Some gusty winds out there. Much cooler fall-like weather Friday and this weekend. So here it comes. And 48-hour uh, probability of greater than a tenth of an inch of rain. You can see Stockton is included here. Sacramento. You see Santa Rosa and Chico and Redding out there. Much higher chances as you go north. Look at Hay Fork at 90%. And there could be some thunderstorm activity with this as well. Highest chances from I-80 and northward. Taking a look at greater than six hour precipitation chances here for some of the north coast here as well. You can see Eureka as we go on in through Friday afternoon, Crescent City, Weaverville and Willow Creek, 80% there, not bad. Now taking a look at the wedding rainfall for Thursday and Friday also, just kind of including extreme northern portions of California and some of southern Oregon here. You can see you're dealing with the Cascades, so pretty good chances coming up here. A little bit of a taste of fall. Now high temperatures Friday, look at these dropping back down here. Palm Springs likely to get down into the 90s for a couple of days as well, but you'll feel a little bit of a cool down here across northern California. Not as substantial across the northern areas, and I'll show you some of those uh, temperature graphs here in a moment. But Sa Sacramento National Weather Service clearly picking up on the storm track with that polar lobe that I showed you here on the first slide with the upper level water vapor loop. Now, looking at probability of snowfall, you know, we're not talking about a lot here. So I just want to drive home that point that you can kind of see maybe a little bit for the higher terrain of the central northern Sierras and some of the Cascades and Klamath Range here up into southern Oregon. So if you're out and about across some of the extreme remote areas and some of the higher terrain, you could get some of that. But the, again, the bigger picture here is that it's going to be quite raw and quite cool out there. You don't want to get people caught off guard. So taking a look at the apparent temperature, this does take wind chill into account. I'm going to put this into motion here. And as we go through the day Wednesday today, you can see we warm up. So there's some 90s out there, some mid and upper 90s here for the, uh, the San Joaquin Valley here as well. And then we scroll on in towards a th a th uh, Wednesday nights here. We're going into Thursday morning here, but you can start to see a little bit of a chill there in the overnight hours for some of the Sacramento Valley. You might notice that. But when we go on through the day Thursday, you can see the temperatures drop back down. You look at that 84, 83, maybe 82, 83 for Sacramento, up towards 89 for Bay Bakersfield, but you'll definitely feel the cool down coming in. And then watch as we go through Friday morning. Look at some of these apparent temperatures across the higher terrain. That's when people off camping in the backcountry. You're going to notice that chill here. It's probably Friday morning is the coldest morning there. And even some of the valley areas here, you can see, you know, you might have to have your long johns on overnight or whatnot, or have your jacket on if you're out in the early morning hours. We push on in through the day Friday, and you can see only warming up into the 70s here for the Sacramento Valley. So not bad. Taking a look here, I just want to kind of give you a visual representation of that polar lobe dropping down here, kind of spins and bobs and weaves and extends and elongates and moves down across Northern California, Central California, and then swings through and it will be moving out as we go through this weekend. Then we're going to warm up a bit. So we'll take a look at some of those temperatures here in a moment. 
Now, looking at Sacramento, you can clearly see where this polar lobe is going to be affecting us here. You can see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, temperatures drop down, maybe only some 70s there on Friday. Then the gradual warm up Saturday. Then we bounce back towards more normal conditions here as we go on in through early next week. Wish it was longer last. This is just kind of a taste of fall. This is looking at San Francisco. You can see it a little bit here, but of course, the coastal areas are affected much less by these. Then a bump of temperatures here coming as we go through the early portion of next week. This is for Lake Tahoe. Check it out. Some of these overnight lows getting down quite chilly here and some of these afternoon highs only into the mid 50s for Friday and Saturday. Susanville, something similar here in the mid 60s showing up there. And then you can see the bounce back in temperatures as we go on in through next week. Los Angeles, if you're in Los Angeles, you're like, oh, what, what trough, what cool down here. You can see not much change in the temperatures here at all. Look at Palm Springs. You feel it a little bit here, only getting into the 90s. That's, you know, relatively chilly there for Palm Springs, right? But then you bounce back as we go on in through Tuesday and Wednesday coming up here. But it's, at least it's not 120 degrees or 118 the times that we've been getting, especially during the month of July. Now, this is Mammoth. You can also see that drop down here with the trough rolling through on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before it kicks out. Now, I like to show these visual diagrams, and one more time, we're going to take a look at that polar lobe, just because I'm obsessed with this, looking at these weather model maps here, and I know that some of you guys like this stuff, but you can see that cooler air at 500 millibars, or about 18,000 feet in the upper levels of the atmosphere, kind of swing through there and start to kick out as we go on into the end of the weekend. Now, looking at two meter temperature anomaly, we're going to just take a look at this, because this gives you a nice idea which areas are being affected the most here. So as we scroll on in through Saturday and Sunday, you can see some areas you're looking at 25 degrees or more below normal here as we go through portions of the weekend. So again, heads up, even across, you know, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, and portions of northern Arizona, a little bit chillier than normal. But yeah, you can really see it centered there across Oregon and northern California and portions of Nevada, however. Total precipitation in inches on the National Blend of Models. Let's take a look at what kind of rainfall is coming with our little taste of fall. Put it into motion. And as we go on in through very late Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, you see that start to pile up there. Mount Shasta starting to get a nice rainfall here. And again, could be some embedded thunderstorms in this activity as we go through Saturday morning here. And you see a bit, maybe a tenth of an inch for Sacramento, a little bit trying to get down towards the Bay Area. Wish I had more to report here, but Lake Tahoe getting a little bit as well. Definitely better chances the further you go north across Northern California. Then that system kicks out. So yeah, just a little a tease of fall. And it, looking at Hurricane Gilma down here, we're not looking at any threat to the Southwest USA right now. These could actually be threatening the Hawaiian Islands. However, I did do a Hawaii video yesterday on the Pacific Northwest Weather Channel. And this is Gilma, uh, you know, it looks like it's gonna be a major hurricane actually for a bit and probably stay as a hurricane for a while and move off to the east. That could even affect with some remnant moisture towards the state of Hawaii. A six to ten day this is after that trough will be moving through you can see we're bouncing back in temperatures here across much of the west coast as we go towards the end of the month this is six to ten day precipitation maybe getting a little bit more monsoon moisture here across some of the southwest as we go through august 30th as well eight to 14 days similar signal there as we go uh, above average here across the west coast and above average signal here across some of the intermountain west and the southwest now, take a look at the daily two meter max temperature. So this is a national blend of models. This is for today. You see some 90s out here across the Sacramento Valley, for example. And then we drop down a little bit. You're going to feel that cool down tomorrow. You'll feel even more on Friday with only some mid 70s showing up. Get out there and enjoy that absolutely glorious temperatures. Your break from the heat. Saturday, not bad as well. Highs only in the 70s for a lot of the Sacramento Valley. You know, the low and mid 80s for the San Joaquin Valley as well. And then we start to bounce back. There's Sunday. Monday, and yeah, we're back in the upper 90s, huh? but don't shoot the messenger here. I'm just reporting the weather. I don't get to control it. Now, looking at the fire smoke out there, it looks like the Boise fire wants to flare up again here on the HER, and it looks like that's the coffee pot fire again as well. But again, much of the state is doing quite well, relatively speaking. And again, there's the Boise fire. The coffee pot fire is somewhere right in here. There it is. Now, average uh, temperature departure from average, you can see that so far this year, just a few areas, Northern California and some of the Central Coast, they're just slightly below average, but much of the Southwest has been quite a ways above average as we go through August 20th here, but we're gonna chop into that a bit with that upper level trough. You're gonna even things out a bit. And precipitation, you know, bring some much needed precipitation out there. You know, even a tenth of an inch can help out there. So yeah, you can kind of see the hit and miss uh, uh, readings here across much of the state. And that's pretty typical here because uh, California, we're not getting a lot of precipitation during the month of August. So just small amounts can really skew these colors. Um, but anyway, 
yeah, we'll continue to watch this. We'll break it down. We'll see if this is going to trend a little weaker or stronger tomorrow. We'll see if the track changes at all. Maybe it'll hang out a bit more and hopefully it stalls and gives a little bit more of a cool down to the state. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.